Joining us now to analyze today's headlines is Christina Mislan. She's an assistant professor of journalism studies at the Missouri School of Journalism. Hi, Christina. Hello, Sonali. Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras stunned the world yesterday when he offered to make painful cuts in pensions and raise taxes in the latest proposal to creditors in exchange for an immediate cash infusion. Despite the fact that last week's de de definite, definitive popular vote against austerity gave him the mandate to stand his ground, Tsipras seems to have caved into demands by Germany and the IMF in order to preserve Greek membership in the Eurozone. The Greek government has offered 12 to 13 billion euros in cuts in exchange for a 50 billion euros loan spread out over three years. The cuts are deeper than any offered before. The plan has yet to be ratified by the Greek parliament. Eurogroup finance ministers will consider it over the weekend, and if they accept it, it will be sent to the EU for approval. Well, Christina, what happened? Did the Syriza party sell out? Well, not only did the party give in to international pressure, but it also decided to go against the will of its own public. So recently, in a recent vote, Greek um, citizens just voted no against uh, a bailout. And so the party decided to go ahead and accept the bailout regardless. Um, so in short, yes, some would consider that the party did sell out. Um, but, you know, you mentioned some of the aspects to the proposal, and I'll mention just a couple more. So we see we see the proposal and we see a few measures that um, could be surprising if we remember that the party is supposed to be a left wing coalition. So, for instance, um, weight will be set on a downward trajectory, according to the Guardian, uh, um, by 2019 to fill the ability of staff, and then you have, of course privatizing any deal that countries make with these supranational organizations that exist, like that, et cetera. And so I think um, what is kind of sad here, and that kind of definitely sad, is that the party really didn't take the opportunity to make a statement like maybe Argentina a few years, some years ago. And then the Florida Supreme Court has ordered the state to redraw eight congressional districts that appear to have been gerrymandered to benefit the Republican Party. According to a Washington Post report, the decision went quite far, quote, slamming political consultants and politicians for their secrecy, including deleted emails and essentially arguing that the state legislature could no longer be trusted to draw its own districts. Lawmakers have been given 100 days to draw a new map. The ruling was made in a case brought by Florida Common Cause, as well as the Florida League of Women Voters, whose president, Pamela Goodman, told press that the decision, quote, sets a precedent for many states across the country who are dealing with gerrymandered districts. The decision could complicate matters for the GOP in the next election. Well, Christina, we don't often think of how crucial congressional districts are to our political landscape. How important is this Florida decision? It's extremely important. You know, some would say, critics would say that gerrymandering actually has more negative effects than voter ID laws, for instance, and other regulations that Republicans are often implementing to keep large group of people, groups of people from voting. And so, um, as of in the New York Times, and this was in 2013, where... Um, Obviously, gerrymandering wastes thousands of votes, right? So you have thousands of people who are voting in districts where they're packed into, and their votes still don't count because of the redistricting, redistricting that Republicans often practice. And so what you see is a result of this disconnect between votes and representation. So the decision is crucial then to any conversation about voting rights in our so-called democracy. Mm -hmm. And gerrymandering has long been practiced, not only in the South, but in states like Virginia and Pennsylvania. So I really see some action on this issue. And finally, in an important follow-up to the Supreme Court's recent historic ruling legalizing same-sex marriage nationwide, Attorney General Loretta Lynch announced today that all married couples everywhere will now be eligible for federal benefits. Prior to the ruling, gay marriage was banned in at least 13 states, complicating the application of federal benefits. Lynch said in a statement, I am proud to announce that the critical programs for veterans and elderly and disabled Americans, which previously could not get, give effect to the marriages of couples living in states that did not recognize those marriages, will now provide federal recognition for all marriages nationwide. Well, Christina, this decision was expected, but still it makes tangible the practical benefits of legalizing marriage for all, right? Definitely. You know, we're finally reaching a point where same-sex marriage, at least legally, is being widely accepted. And so we finally, 
um, joined about 14 other countries where same-sex marriage is legal. Now, at the same time, you know, we have to remember, as other civil rights issues have illustrated to us, it's not enough to only change the legal system. It takes much longer, and it's a hard battle to fight when um, to actually see culture change, right? And so it will be some time and real meaningful change in that area. And I also, again, want us to remember this is a victory that we should be celebrating. But we should also remember that the fight doesn't stop here, and many LGBTQ folks are um, starting that conversation where now let's take it to the next step and let's talk about all the other issues that we have to fight against as well, for instance, like violence against our body. Christina, thanks as always for joining us. We'll talk to you again next week. Chris okay. Christina Mislan is an assistant professor of journalism studies at the Missouri School of Journalism. This is Uprising. When we come back, We'll play an interview that I did on stage this week in Los Angeles with author Max Blumenthal on the one-year anniversary of the Israeli war on Gaza. We'll discuss his book, The 51-Day War, Ruin and Resistance in Gaza. Stay tuned.